Well, I'm a metallurgist. <laughs> okay. And a metallurgist uh, studies the science and engineering of metals. Um, and I sort of became one of those when I was uh, a sophomore in college, the Air Force Academy. We had a course in engineering mechanics that had about 10 lectures on materials. And I was just fascinated uh, by the manner in which you can change a material and change its properties. My research focuses on recrystallization and grain growth of titanium alloys. Um, so the overall goal of my thesis is to help develop a model of a forging process for these titanium aluminum alloys. Um, so I'm doing a lot of the experimental part of it, focusing on the recrystallization property. So w when we're forming a part, so this is the steps in forming this titanium connecting rod. We start with a, a bar and it's uh, formed in one step. Then it forms in another step and you start to see a little bit of the shape of a connecting rod. <clears throat> and then finally we have this connecting rod. Well, you can imagine how difficult it is to predict uh, or understand how each of these regions uh, deforms differently and recrystallizes differently. So the way we typically do it is to take a handbook or take a measurement from this and we just estimate these things. With the, these new computational tools, we have the capability to actually embed uh, our knowledge into software and predict how recrystallization and grain growth occur, recovery recrystallization and grain growth occur uh, in the ma material quantitatively, and then we can optimize that uh, later. Um, and so that means that we can get the properties exactly the way we want, where we want them. I study uh, magnesium alloys. I'm looking at how to improve formability in magnesium sheath uh, right now due to its uh, hexagonal crystal structure. Magnesium is really hard to uh, produce formable parts at low temperatures. Um, so we're trying to study how we can use recrystallization uh, to produce a less textured sheet, uh, which has better formability. This integrated computational materials engineering, I call it ICME, is something we developed at Ford. I was at Ford for many, many years. When you're developing new materials, you have to understand the manufacturing process, the materials, and the end application. So one thing we worked on there were engine blocks that are made from castings. So we knew how to cast the part, then we had to learn all about the metallurgy. There's hundreds of different phenomena that go on at many different length scales in a cast part. And so we had to understand all that and be able to predict it. Then we used that to figure out the life or the durability of that component so it didn't break when we sold it to a, uh, a customer. Recovery, recrystallization, and grain growth all have a big effect on the microstructure of materials. The really strong impact on the mechanical properties of materials. Anytime your material is deformed and then reheated, you have to consider how recrystallization and grain growth is going to affect the mechanical properties. Recovery, recrystallization, and grain growth is very important in my research. So recrystallization, my material that we're looking at, it has some secondary phase particles which provide um, alternate sites for recrystallization and this allows us to control the texture of the material which improves the formability. And grain growth is very important because we want a high strength material and so we'd like to minimize grain growth during the recrystallization process uh, to keep it as fine grained as possible. I believe this is important for MSE 220 students to understand and to hear about because they'll be dealing with manufacturing products all of their careers. Um, and when we change the, when we do rec recovery, recrystallization, and grain growth, the size of the grains change, and that dramatically can influence the properties. And as engineers, we need to understand how in manufacturing affects these properties, and it affects it through recovery, recrystallization, and grain growth. So you'll understand about this property, and then be able to go uh, talk to your metallurgist in the plant if you're not a metallurgist, and be able to carry on a rational conversation with that person and make sure that there are no blind spots in your engineering designs.